You know, there's something really funny about the way that metal music works from year to year. It seems like at the beginning of the year and as the year progresses, everyone talks about how great a year it's been, how many great albums there are, great new artists, great classic artists coming back. But then at the end of the year, so many people then flip their, their script on that and suddenly say, oh, it was a terrible year, there was nothing good, I didn't like anything. Well, I'm here to tell you that those people are fucking liars. Uh, so Daryl here once again on another sunny Sunday in, in May, actually. This will be the last, uh, last episode in May. And I want to talk to you about the week that was, which is uh, evidence once again that this year has been an outstanding year thus far, and it would be impossible for this year to go horribly wrong. I think even if you put out no good albums the rest of the year, I think this year uh, was, was well worth it. Uh, we started off the week with a band called Galileus. Uh, from Poland. Now this is a band that absolutely blew my mind. And not blew my mind like, oh my god, they're the greatest band I've ever heard, so they blew my mind. I mean the album changed my thought process for at least a day or two. It's this really like psychedelic, melodic, it, it, it sounds like if Fish was a metal band. It, that's the best way I can describe it, because a lot of it sounds like they're just jamming, but it works so well. Uh, it takes you, it really takes you on a journey. Which, you know, for better or worse, I mean, you know, if you're, if you're sitting around smoking weed or, or doing whatever recreational drugs you choose, this could be the perfect album for you. Uh, if you are sober, <laughs> this could also be the perfect album for you if you've always wanted to try drugs but were always too afraid. But you should definitely check it out. The name of the album is Necrocosmos, and it is available on their band camp site to listen to, so you really have no reason not to. Uh, just really, really interesting. And I don't know that I would go back and listen to it a hundred times, but I could certainly see myself pulling this one out every now and then and just kind of uh, <laughs> changing my outlook for, for an hour or so, uh, which was a good start to the week. Now, when you go from there, you know, as I said, classic bands outdoing themselves, you get uh, My Dying Bride is back with another EP, which seems to be the route they've gone recently, but they have a new EP called The Manuscript, and in the review I was trying to explain that we all have that music that when we're upset, pissed off, whatever, we sit in the dark room and, and uh, you know, crank it up. And emo kids, you know, with their floppy hair and, and all this shit, they, they have theirs and we have ours. For me, it's My Dying Bride, you know, because I think uh, Aaron Stainthorpe is just, it, he just has that voice. He has the voice that defines the doom genre for me. And it's no different on the manuscript. This is really a band at the height of their career. They are just doing everything right at this point, and everything works. I mean, you have his kind of almost sobbing vocals, uh, the violins are perfect once again, and it's four tracks of awesome, and that's it. And it's so hard, it's hard to explain to a non-metal fan, or even a f person who's not a fan of doom metal, that it can somehow make you happy, uh, but it really does. And you know, you listen to this and it's just so well executed, so well thought out, it's, there's nothing wrong with anything My Dying Bride is doing these days. Uh, the same could be said, for the first time in a long time, for uh, Timo Toki. Uh, Brian did a review of Timo Toki's Avalon, which, uh, you know, as I hate to compare, I know he hates it, but it, it's basically his, his version of Avantasia, I guess. It is a metal opera called The Land of New Hope. And, uh, I, again, I don't want to contrast and compare, but he, he knocked this one out of the park. And this is the first real strong thing he's done since leaving Stradivarius. I mean, not to say that his stuff has been bad, but he's been lacking just that that punch. You know, he, he hasn't had it recently, and this is his return to form. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this album whatsoever, and as Brian said, he can't praise it enough. The Just the list of guest singers uh, was alone enough for, you know, to pique my interest. I mean, first of all, he's got Derek Sherinian playing some keyboards, which is awesome. He's got Michael Kiske from... Halloween, formerly of Halloween. Tony Kako from Sonata Artica, Sharon Denadel from Within Temptation, and Elise Reed from Amaranth, which is a band that I don't particularly like. I know I think Brian does, but I don't particularly like them. But her voice has always been very, very good as far as I'm concerned, and on this album she knocks it out of the park. So you you definitely gotta check this one out. This will be one of the best uh, kind of symphonic power metal albums you'll hear this year. Um, and, you know, it's good to see Timo Tolki back at the top of his game. Um, going from there was an interesting female-fronted band called Upon Wings. Now, this is really a solo project. Um, the lead singer, Anne Autumn Erickson, this is, this is her deal. 
Uh, she's got some session and studio musicians on the album, but this is, you know, this is for her. This is the beginning for her. And unfortunately, that's, that's what brings the album down, is that it's a beginning. You can tell this isn't a band. This isn't, you know, a group of people that are going somewhere together. This is, this is her beginning. And her voice is tremendous. And as I said in the review, it, it, it just sucks. And I do this just as much as everybody, and I guess that makes me, you know, as big a hypocrite as everybody else. But, you know, when you hear a band or a singer or anybody and you say, oh, they sound like so-and-so or so-and-so or a combination of so-and-so and so-and-so, it, it kind of it depersonalizes them as artists. And, you know, like I said, I do it just as much as everyone else because I feel like it's a, an easy way to convey your point to people who might not otherwise get it. So I'm not going to do that. I will say that her, her voice is tremendous. She hits all the right notes. She's got great range. She can be accessible or operatic. She's, she's got that part down. But I think that the problem with the EP, which is called Afterlife, uh, is that the music doesn't match the intensity. Uh, it, it just doesn't. She, you know, like I said, she's doing all the right things, but the music you can tell is, you know, people who are not tied into it. They're not, I don't want to say they're not accountable, because obviously they are, but it's just not, it just doesn't match. And, you know, she needs to get a band together, get some like-minded musicians, get some people who see her vision, and they could probably do something really great. And I'm looking forward to seeing what she does next. I mean, the EP's okay, but, you know, she, she really has to carry the load. And, I mean, just think of a band like Within Temptation. You know, Sharon is an amazing vocalist, but the band elevates her as well. They play off of each other. The same thing for older Lacuna Coil, uh, Epica. I mean, all of these bands, the, 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 the similarity is that they have a great front woman backed by a strong band. And that's what Erickson needs here. She needs a band behind her that's going to, you know, push her rather than just kind of sit behind and let her work. Um, but looking forward to seeing what she's doing. Uh, the week ended now with with an album that I think as it stands right now, if you if you put a gun to my head, not that you would or should, but if you put a gun to my head, this would be my album of the year so far uh, by Pelic. Now Pelic, as some of you know, is obviously the, the man of the, the lead singer here, who is also in the band uh, Damnation Angels, but this album is his solo band with, you know, his, the band he put together. It's called Ocean of Opportunity, and if you're looking for symphonic power metal, if you're looking for operatic, crazy rock opera, <coughs> I think that this is the album you've been waiting for. There is so much going on here, and it is all executed perfectly. There was not a minute listening to this album, and I think I listened to it eight times before I wrote the review, and eight times over the course of two days, I mean, I just had it on repeat. I cannot find anything wrong with it. I really can't. There's nothing that you can pick out and say, oh, well, he could have done better here. No, the songs are well written, they're well played, they're executed perfectly, and I, I can't say enough for, uh, for what they've done here. And I, I think that it stands as, as uh, kind of a note that you might not know this guy, you know, as you, if you're an American metal fan in particular, you might not be aware that Pelic exists, that he or his band exists, but there you go, now you know. And this is uh, an album that you definitely have to hear to believe, because I think you're going to be really impressed with the way it combines almost like Broadway show tunes with symphonic power metal. And it, there's just an amazing, amazing amount of work put into this. And I know Brian agrees that, that this is a, a, an absolutely fantastic album, so make sure you check that one out too. Uh, that'll be all for this week, folks. Uh, be coming back next week. We're, we're getting into June now, which means we're almost at the halfway point of the year. Uh, so in the next couple weeks, you're going to get top 10 lists again, uh, probably top 10 EPs of the year so far, top 10 albums of the year so far, and I want to make sure I do a uh, top new artists of the year so far, because I think there's a lot of artists that we've dealt with so far this year that deserve a little extra mention. Uh, so we'll be coming back with that, and hopefully uh, we can expose you to some stuff that you might not have taken the time to listen to before and uh, you can discover something new. So in the meantime, just make sure you are um, you know, keeping an eye on the site, make sure that you are ready to uh, see where we go from here, and if you have any musical suggestions, uh, feel free to throw them at us, because we are always looking for stuff to review. So you can send us a message on Facebook, 
uh, shoot us an email, sorreturnalblog at gmail.com. Uh, and yeah, hell, leave us a message wherever, and we will get it. And uh, just keep your ears open and help us keep ours. So, guys, until next week, have a good weekend, and stay as metal as humanly possible. <laughs>